tell you a little bit about of what we were doing in Atoa uh, in, uh, on semiconductor and graphene quantum dots, and there are many people involved. I want to acknowledge uh, uh, most of all Marek Orkuczynski, my colleague, and uh, Ishir Osvidan and Utson Mendes, who are here, and Paweł Potash, uh, who is also from Wrocław, and Devrim Gutzlu and Anja Trojna. So, uh, Sergei Studenikin gave a beautiful talk a couple of days ago on uh, localizing electrons in, in gated structures. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about where we can take this capability in the future. And then I want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, quantum dots with uh, uh, in single magnetic ions as uh, uh, model systems for single uh, atom memory or semiconductor spintronics. Then I will move to uh, topological quantum dots <coughs> in topological insulators and hopefully spend quite a bit of time on graphene quantum dots because graphene quantum dots uh, are also uh, materials for print printable electronics, and that's a very large and growing field. And we had a, a beautiful uh, talk by Professor Sumir. We all recognize the hand. <coughs> so uh, this is based on uh, the, the um, um, most of the results are based on a computational platform, QNano, which we have developed. And this uh, platform is it's a multi-scale platform that starts with a structure, so with atomic structure of, an un, of, a, of a quantum dot um, with a given shape, composition, position of atoms, typically of the order of a billion atoms. And then we, uh, if there is strain involved, we calculate actual uh, position of those atoms. Uh, then we use a lot of uh, ab initio input to determine uh, bulk properties of strain materials uh, and input this to uh, different levels of approximation for single particle properties, mainly atomistic tight binding Hamiltonians. Uh, that can be done, at least for us, uh, um, to, with, with, to about a million atoms. And then uh, the trick is to calculate all the Coulomb matrix elements, and that's that we learned from quantum chemistry at NRC. Uh, and then we use uh, configuration interaction or density matrix or normalization group or a combination of those to determine uh, response functions, so to determine interacting quasi-particles that, uh, uh, that determine the response functions, such as uh, multi-excitons or high excitation optics, high bias transport. But I will mainly talk about physics with my fingers. So, <clears throat> what is uh, an interesting uh, um, uh, avenue that we are pursuing is this analogy between uh, being able to localize electrons in gated structures uh, that, that is being developed and, for example, truly atomistic structures like quantum dots. Uh, now they can be uh, all described by some form of a Hubbard model and so... Uh, strongly correlated electron physics meets the semiconductor physics, and we can think of something like Hubbard engineering. And there is a very large community in strong correlated physics that has uh, many fantastic ideas. So let me start with the, uh, these electron spin-based quantum circuits. Uh, so the goal here is to change the $100 billion industry. How can you change an industry from classical to quantum? It's a small proposal. Uh, so we want to generate a macroscopic quantum state in a field transistor with the minimum processing. So this is a, a normal transistor, and what we want to do is we want you to take a nano drill and start structuring the gate, yes? as we do for these... Uh, triple or quadruple quantum dots. So imagine that you can generate a structure like this, where you will localize your electrons in this area, so you will have a chain of electrons, and there are these additional structures. What, we, what have we accomplished? If we have a chain of electrons, of spin one-half particles, they interact necessarily antiferromagnetically. Yes? So such a chain, will have a ground state that's continuously connected to an excitation spectrum and is theref therefore compressible. 
So it decoheres. What one can do is to bring additional quantum dot with two electrons and then allow these electrons to tunnel. And when under proper conditions, what this does is changes the interaction of these two electrons to ferromagnetic. You can think of this as an archi-ky interaction induced by this uh, reservoir of electrons. So we start with this uh, structure. Uh, we now change the interaction between these electrons to ferromagnetic. Uh, and so we have a pairs of ferromagnetically coupled particles. This is effectively a spin one chain, and now everybody knows what will happen. If we calculate the band gap between ground and excited states, and this is for spin half chain, this is for spin one chain, these are uh, DMRG results with an input from configuration interaction for realistic structures, then you see that this gap uh, decays to a thermodynamic limit, which is uh, about half of the exchange coupling. And that means that we have generated a macroscopic quantum state protected by a Haldane gap. This uh, ground state is fourfold degenerate, so that effectively what we have done is created two effective spin one-half particles which are correlated over macroscopic distance. So we have converted this field effect transistor into a macroscopic quantum state, which can be thought of as two spin one-half particles at the ends. And now you can take this and start build quantum circuits, which you can see with a magnifying glass. So you don't need a, you don't need a nanofab. All right. There are other applications of these quantum dot molecules in field effect transistors. Uh, you can make a chirality-based qubit. Uh, you can use it for uh, GHZ entangled state generator. You can generate Berry space, and you can read uh, about uh, these uh, ideas, including also quantum spin blockade uh, in our recent paper. So, what else can we do? Um, Let's talk a little bit about an, a, a, an attempt to engineer topological effects which are driven by electronic interactions in this uh, field effect transistor platform. Yes? So I will give you a little example of, of something that is, uh, that is uh, submitted. So let's take a quadruple quantum dot. We had a first attempts at, uh, at making quadruple quantum dots from Institute Nell. Uh, let's put one electron in each quantum dot, and let's assume that they are all spin polarized. And now let me remove one electron. This will be a hole. It's red, so it's a hole in a three electron spin polarized complex. And uh, there is a lot of work on quantum rings in the correlated uh, uh, community. But let's, let's focus on the physics. So what does this hole do? Uh, let's look at it, this whole tunneling from dot 1 to 2. There is a transition matrix element T, then it tunnels from 2 to 3, and then from 4 to 1. And when you calculate this tunneling matrix element, it's also T. So you can calculate the uh, uh, energy spectrum. It's uh, very simple, similar to the hexagonal structure that, uh, that uh, Jacqueline showed. So the ground state is non-degenerate, it's minus 2T. Nothing to it so far. Now let's uh, take this uh, uh, hole and now let's change the uh, spin structure of the underlying complex. So let's flip one spin and this will be hole moving in a spin one half complex. And uh, it will, we will give it a different color. So now this spin one half complex, three spin, is characterized by a quantity called chirality. It's a, something that underlines the RVB theory. Uh, and, um, and so it really uh, has two eigenvalues that corresponds to the direction of the motion of the minority spin. So we could be moving to the left or to the right in this complex, and there, these are two possible eigenvalues of the chirality operator. So the hole is dressed by chirality, and now when the hole tunnels, uh, nothing happens here, but when the hole wants to tunnel from 4 to 1, now it knows in what geometry it is, whether it's on a ring or on a line, and these are two topologically distinct geometries. 
if it is on a ring, if it can tunnel, this matrix element acquires a phase, a phase associated with the three electron complex, with the chirality operator. And so uh, the topology distinguishes the total spin because the hole has spin one half, the red hole had a spin three half. And now something appeared in the Hamiltonian, a phase appeared in the Hamiltonian. We can work out the eigenstates and it looks like the hole is indeed acquiring a phase as if it was, if it, as it was a Haronov-Bohm effect. Yes, the hole moves and acquires a phase and so there is an emergence of artificial gauge field which translates into a uh, uh, transfer of momentum from the spin system to the electronic system. And that actually has been worked out to some extent by Kaspers and Iskes, I think, 1988 or something like that. Not for this complex one. So now we can calculate the, the, the energy spectrum and the ground state is, uh, uh, has, is proportional to tunneling matrix element but also has a phase that was acquired and so it's the energy of this one half complex is minus square root of three of t and everybody can remember that the ground state of a spin polarized complex was minus two. So the gauge field reduced the tunneling and stabilized the spin polarized complex. So ground state is spin polarized and so for large interaction you have a spin polarized complex for a weak interactions, uh, kinetic energy dominates and you have a spin depolarized complex. So we can engineer spin. How can we, uh, how can we understand this uh, or see this in transport? So if we take a, a spin, uh, if we take a half field molecule, the total spin is equal to zero. Now, when we removed one particle, something rather amazing happens because all electrons spin polarized. So uh, so we just removed, and this is not the ground state, this is the ground state, and so the spin uh, is uh, large, and so the difference in spin is larger than the spin of a single electron, and so we can't add a single electron, and there would be a spin blockade in such a structure. So if you wanted to have, to generate a spin blockade, you know how to do this. Let's now move to a different different topics, so this is all correlated electron physics with a topological flavor. Let's talk about topological quantum dots. So actually, according to Frank Wilczek, first discussion of topology was done by, uh, was carried out by Gerhard Herzberg, and according to Frank, this was uh, the first discussion of the Z2 invariant, and of course, uh, there is a, uh, the famous papers by Michael Berry. Right now, we are all celebrating. Uh, uh, so, Shou Cheng Zhang and Charlie Kane and Duncan Haldi, 2012 Dirac Medal, and, and Lawrence Mollenkamp and Zhang Ken Kane, Buckley Price, and so on. Let's, let's uh, uh, look at these uh, uh, topological insulators slightly different from the perspective of semiconductor physics. So let's talk about an atom. It has a spin orbit coupling S dot S, and we all know that this is a heavy hole state, yes, in uh, semiconductor physics 101. So what is this, this heavy hole state? This heavy hole state corresponds to angular momentum one and a spin. They are all locked in parallel. If you look at it, this is nothing else but a phase, yes? And if I add to it some radial function, then I can think of this as a, an electron moving on a ring. And so the electron moving on the ring, for example, to the right, will be locked with a spin up. And if I look at the second heavy hole state, just by solving this L dot S Hamiltonian, it has an electron moving to the left, locked to a spin down state. And this is just a manifestation of the time reversal symmetry. Yes? So this is, this is why Shou Cheng was looking at heavy holes for, for quite some time. Now, Holes are really Latinger spinners, and there is something called chirality that goes back to, 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 to Lusham, and to, we worked this out uh, quite some time ago, 97. So, if I have a, a disk, uh, the, this Latinger spinner is characterized by uh, uh, four components. If I am just looking at the 
uh, four band k dot p. So this is a plus three half, minus one half, plus one half, and minus three half. And the important part, which we call chirality, is the order of the uh, parity of the wave functions. So you have to order parity, and then everything else follows, total angular momentum. So here you would have even, even, odd, odd. If you, is it real? If you now bring a second disk, and uh, now this even, even is just uh, by, uh, bonding and anti-bonding states, and you can work out, uh, as Marek Korkusinski did in his thesis, you can work out what uh, uh, the energy of uh, the ground state is, and so it is mostly symmetric or bonding when the, do when the dots are close, and then becomes anti-bonding where the dots are separated. Can you see this? Here's an experiment from Dan Gammon's group. Uh, so what you measure is you measure something that is sensitive to whether the wave function between the dots is bonding or anti-bonding or symmetric or anti-symmetric. Here is a Zeeman energy as a function of applied electric field, which brings the, the whole, the two quantum dots to resonance. So it's large for small, for Zeeman splitting is large for, for small distances. And as you uh, uh, move the dots apart, it comes down to zero. It would be nice to have more supporting information, but yes, in my opinion, chirality is real. So now we move to a mercury telluride quantum dot. There is a very nice paper by Kai Chang on these dots using effective two-band model. So we want to make sure that this is real and, and what's the essence of it. So this is based on an eight-band uh, K dot P theory with uh, uh, Gottfried Lander, Landwehr. Uh, and uh, in addition to these heavy and light holes, we have to add electrons and split of band. And uh, so again, we have chirality. So it gets a little complicated, but the only thing to remember is that there is a chirality state and there is another chirality state with this or different order of parity operators. So if we calculate the subbands now as a function of height, so these are, uh, here we are in the inverted regime, here we are. Uh, uh, in a normal regime, for narrow dots, we are in a normal regime. For wider ones, we have an inverted structures. Uh, yes, so these are normal subbands, these are inverted subbands. And at the crossing point, we have a Dirac cone for the dispersion in the plane. Now we quantize this dispersion by putting it on a disk. And so this is a, uh, a we are in a normal state. So this is a narrow disk, yes. And you see normal uh, uh, valence and uh, conduction band states. Uh, and they are uh, labeled by this total angular momentum uh, relate, uh, uh, related to, to chirality. If you now uh, move to inverted regime, then you see the uh, states emerging in the gap. So you see states emerging uh, uh, in the gap. And if you look at these states, uh, one of them, uh, they really are localized close to the edge. What's necessary in a, even in the two-band effective model is to, uh, in fact, determine the two-length scale, that is, how the state decays and how close to the interface it is. And we have worked out uh, these models, and uh, uh, they will be available soon. What can you do with this? The, we were tuning the properties of the structure as a function of height that you can't do, but you can tune this with strain. And this is a result of a simulation with strain. So no strain, you have a state in the gap. And if you apply strain, you have no strain. In, you have no state in the gap. So you can imagine that uh, in a normal state, before applying strain, you have current running through because electrons move through these surface states. And if you apply strain, you turn the current off. So you have a strain electrical nanoscale sen strain sensor. Yes, you can put it on the wing of an air aircraft and read it electrically what's going on. OK, semiconductor spintronics with quantum dots. Uh, our two chairs, Jacek Kossuth and Tomasz Diet, are, of course, uh, uh, pioneers of this field. Uh, we have been interested in quantum dots, semi-magnetic quantum dots, for a long time with John and Marek Grabowski. Uh, and, uh, and so now it's possible to make these dots. Uh, thanks uh, with single mangan, and there is a, a beautiful work from Henri Mariette and Lucien Bezombe and the whole group in Grenoble, and I will be talking about uh, dots uh, from Warsaw, uh, and uh, experiments were done by uh, 
Piotr Kosacki, also in Grenoble with Marek Potemski. So these are, these are the dots. This, this, uh, 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 we, we, these are the quantum dots in calcium telluride. Uh, there is a mangan there, and uh, we will be uh, photo exciting. So there will be electron and hole, and these spins of electrons and holes interact with the spins of the magnetic ion. Uh, the electrons uh, uh, have a shell structure, and the holes have a shell structure. And you can see this shell structure by looking at the uh, highly emission from highly excited dots. So you have a S and P and D shell. And if you look into the S shell, you see the exciton recombination in the presence of the mangan. It's split into uh, uh, six, mainly six peaks. And then there is a biexciton emission spectrum. So we want to understand this uh, uh, structure. So there are uh, different exciton combination. You can have electron on S shell, hole on S shell, you can have on P shell. And as we have shown quite some time ago with Manfred Bayer, uh, you can have these SD configurations, which are not optically active, but they are uh, uh, mixed in by Coulomb interactions, and they are very important. Uh, and so you can write the exit on ground state as a linear combination of these configurations, properly symmetrized in Jacobi coordinates and so on. So a little more complicated than on this picture. And in, uh, in particular, there is, a, there is a, the minus sign there. So this complete, this interaction of this exciton with mangan is, is, is known because complete electron hole exchange and fine structure of exciton is now available in this uh, shell structure model. It depends on how many shells you, you have. You can, it depends on asymmetry of a quantum dot and so on. So that will be another talk. But it's available so we can calculate the interaction of an exciton with the uh, magnetic ion. And I will focus on this aspect. So the first thing you want to do is you want to calculate the whole exchange interaction with magnetic ion. So this is an exchange Hamiltonian. These are the exchange couplings. And uh, this is the whole spin and the mangan spin. It's only jz, mz interaction. And if we now take and calculate the expectation value in the state of this interaction, it's proportional to mz, to the magnetic projection of the magnetic ion. And it has a form. When we look at this uh, form, it consists of two terms. Uh, so uh, first term is just a normal interaction of the electron and the hole on an S state. But there is a additional term. Uh, which is proportional to the uh, amplitude of the exciton wave function on dark configuration, which is only possible due to electron hole interactions, and scattering from S to D shells. Yes? So this is a, a quantum interference between interactions and uh, mangan-mediated scattering. And uh, uh, Piotr Kosatsky's group has measured these effects, and they are already reported. Uh, what I want to talk a, a little bit about is a biexciton. A biexciton, in principle, should not interact with a magnetic ion, because both electrons and holes are in a singlet state, so they do not see the magnetic ion. Uh, on the other hand, there are these excited states. For example, for holes, you can have a spin-polarized uh, uh, complex, and you can also have a spin-polarized complex for, for an electron, and we have predicted uh, their behavior quite some time ago. Uh, and so there are also complexes where only holes are polarized. And if you take uh, 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 an interaction of this uh, uh, state with spin polarized holes, so this is a triplet jz equals 0 state. And now if you calculate this triplet jz equals 0 state, uh, it's coupling to the ground state. Uh, and this is the interaction Hamiltonian. Uh, you need to move a hole from, you need to move a hole from, uh, uh, D level to the S level, and if you calculate this interaction, it's again proportional to MZ, and so the final result is that the biexciton ground state, when it's coupled to the magnetic ion, to a localized spin, has a fine structure. So it splits into three, and uh, so you can sense, you can sense localized spins with, with spin unpolarized electrons. And how can you see this? If you didn't have interactions, the recombination spectrum from biexciton would be just a reverse spectrum of the exciton recombination. Yes. So, but if you have these interactions, they all look the same. 
And there is, a, of course, a transition from one to another that depends a little bit on parameters, and that's what, what has been described in this paper and compared with experiment. Now I want to, uh, in the last uh, 10 minutes, I want to uh, describe uh, carbon uh, graphene quantum dots. So uh, there is a problem with self-assembled quantum dots uh, in terms of control over shape, atomic composition, and so on. And perhaps uh, uh, graphene, graphene quantum dots uh, offer uh, a much better control. There are also potentially no nuclear spins, uh, and so this could be a source of coherent circuit. And so our interest in this was to, was to combine electronic, photonic, and magnetic properties in a single material, uh, graphene, uh, using lateral size, shape, and edge engineering uh, with the hope of creating graphene-only, integrated, nanoscale quantum circuit. Yes. Nanoscale because it's very small, and quantum because no nuclear spins. All right, you can make it. Uh, Klaus Enstein's group have been pioneering this, and uh, Paul McEwen was the first, first uh, quantum dot in 2005. You can etch. Uh, you can grow on metal sub uh, substrates. You see here a nice triangular graphene quantum dot. Uh, you can use colloidal uh, uh, root, uh, like uh, with nanocrystals, and you can make these uh, uh, graphene quantum dots. Claim is with excellent control over, uh, over uh, uh, size and or number of atoms. So let's make semiconductors out of graphene. Uh, let's see if we can open a gap. Yes, we take, a, we take a hexagonal quantum dot with armchair edges, and we calculate the gap from, uh, for, say, 100 atom uh, quantum dot to a million atom quantum dot, and we span, with T about 2.5 electron volt, we span the energy range from UV to terahertz, and if you look and compare, just by changing the, 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 the size. And uh, so here somewhere is a silicon, indium arsenide quantum uh, dots, uh, let's selenize nanocrystals. You can get whatever you want in principle. Does a gap depend on size and edge? Yes, this is a comparison of uh, three different structures. Indeed, this is a hexagon with uh, zigzag edge, and this is a hexagon with armchair edge, and so you see a very, very different dependence on the size, and this is a dependence on shape. We deform this hexagon with zigzag edge into a triangle, and you see again a very different behavior. So these triangles have a very uh, intriguing property. They break sublattice symmetry, yes? so this is something that uh, uh, does not exist in semiconductor quantum dots, but this sublattice symmetry is very important. And so this is a spectrum of a zigzag uh, with uh, unbroken, preserved sublattice symmetry. You see a nice continuous spectrum, as you would expect for a Dirac fermions. You break this sublattice symmetry, and you see a dramatic effect that part of the spectrum now collapsed to a shell of the generate states. Yes? So you have collected a lot of states near the Fermi energy into a perfectly degenerate shell. This shell can be made, the generacy of the shell can be macroscopic. So you can create a macroscopic degenerate shell, like a lowest Landau level, but without magnetic field. And so, of course, you can think of magnetism, you can think of electron electron correlations, or maybe even fractional quantum Hall effect at zero magnetic field. So we need to charge this. We need to charge this shell, and so we bring the quantum dot in contact with uh, with a gate, and uh, we move all the electrons from the shell to the gate. Put the Fermi level uh, in the middle. We do Hartree-Fock calculations now on a very stable system, and then we do uh, we do configuration interaction interaction uh, on calculations on Hartree-Fock quasi-particles corresponding to this shell. When we look at the gap, it's just like electrons on a Haldane sphere. The gap oscillates as a function of shell feeling. Yes. So you, for different fractional feeling of the shell, you have, for some fractional feeling, you have a very large gap, for some very small gap. K 
Can we tune the magnetic moment with carrier density? Yes, if you look at the middle of the, in the middle of the, for a half field shell, you have a very large gap. This corresponds to uh, maximum spin. So as we are loading electrons, you see that the spin is building up. So electrons come in with parallel spin. It's like just, just like Hund's rules. And eventually we have spin polarized electrons. And that can be obtained using mean field Hubbard model or D, uh, uh, DFT or uh, other. Uh, methods. This pin polarization is localized at the edge and now the question is can we control this uh, magnetic moment with voltage? Uh, yes, we can add an electron and you see here complete the polarization of the spin. Yes? So, uh, so this uh, can be visualized. Uh, uh, we start with a spin polarized shell. We add an electron, has to come with opposite spin. Uh, if I look at the spin-spin correlation function, I look for this electron. Uh, this electron looks for other electrons with the same spin. For this state, there is none, so it doesn't see anything. When we turn on interactions, uh, this is what it sees. So it's a strongly correlated state. The spin depolarization is a strongly correlated state. Can we control current? With voltage, yes, so we attach leads, we send current, we calculate conductivity, these are Coulomb blockade peaks, and so you have Coulomb blockade peaks, you can control conductivity. Where you have, where you have the spin depolarization, you have strongly correlated state, you can't add an electron, that's a normal case, and you have a spin blockade. So again, spin blockade appears. Can we control magnetization with voltage and light? So let me summarize how this might work. We start with a structure with a, the with a, uh, magnetic moment. We add an electron with a gate. This electron depolarizes our electron, so washes out the magnetic moment. Now we illuminate the structure. This adds an exciton, and the whole acts as a catalyst. It's like a field marshal. It enters into the room full of soldiers. They are all drinking and laughing. When he walks in, they all stand at attention, and so restore, the whole restores magnetization. And how would you see this? Well, this is an absorption spectrum for such a structure. You would uh, be, have, a, you can only couple to a uh, S equals zero uh, absorption uh, subspace, and uh, the low energy uh, transition states would be blocked, and the same would happen in the emission. You cannot connect the ground states, which differ by very, very large spin. So you would see effectively a stoke shift be between emission and absorption, which is purely related to electron-electron interactions and, and spin blockade. Optical properties of colloidal graphene quantum dots. I think I have three minutes. Seven. Okay, so. Uh, where are we with experiment? Uh, uh, we are now working with uh, John Maguire, Michigan State University, trying to understand the colloidal graphene quantum dots. Uh, these are uh, structures which uh, either can be fabricated as these triangle with uh, mm, armchair and mixture of armchair and zigzag edges uh, with 168 atoms or 132 atoms. Okay. And there is apparently a very good uh, uh, control over these two different uh, number of atoms. Of course, uh, the chemists draw all these things around it. We will ignore them for the time being. So if you calculate the, tar uh, the tide binding uh, and tide binding and Hartree-Fock energy spectrum, I am plotting it now as a function of eigenstate index and then plotting it back so that we can see more. Uh, you see a band gap. And you see that the tight binding and Hartree Fock gaps are almost identical. There is now an asymmetry between electron and hole, between valence and conduction, but as is always in Hartree Fock. So, how can we understand now optical properties? The valence and conduction band, the top of the valence band and the bottom of conduction bands, are doubly degenerate. This double degeneracy is associated with a remnant of valley, uh, uh, of valley degeneracy. It can be related to the symmetry of the structure, really, but to the symmetry of the hexagonal ring. Here we come to the same hexagon. Um, and so, because of course it's made of hexagon rings. If you sit in the center, you, the first thing you see is a hexagon ring. So, 
we we can we can we, when we look at the top of the valence band we create excitations to the conduction band and there are four times four possible electron hole pairs four because of orbital uh, degeneracy and, and, and four because of spin degeneracy. Yes? So there is a total of 16 possible states and they uh, uh, can be classified first into singlets and triplets, so this is normal electron hole exchange, but then there is a scattering among singlets associated with this orbital degeneracy and we end up with uh, dark singlets uh, overlapping with dark triplets and a two bright singlet states. Just like in semiconductor quantum dots, there are two degenerate singlet states. You can look at the excitation spectrum. So in a Hartree-Fock, of course, you have uh, somewhere here an, an absorption spectrum. These states are degenerate. But when you turn on correlations, you have a, a redshift. That's an excitonic effect. And then you have this splitting of uh, the band of singlet states into bright doublet and a dark uh, uh, states that overlap with your dark triplet exciton states. Future. Can you make topological insulator without spin orbit coupling? And can you do it in graphene? Well, yes, you in principle can. You take a graphene nanoribbon and you twist it. Yes? And you twist it and it will have one edge now. You have to wind twice, so there is a twist in it. It has one edge, so it's effectively a quantum dot. It's another version of a topological quantum dot, but without spin orbit coupling. And in graphene, if you just uh, calculate in the simplest, uh, simplest ring, a normal ring has a normal spectrum, meaning it has uh, some uh, um, state, two states, the general states at the top of the valence band and two states at the uh, bottom of the conduction band and a well-developed gap. If you, on the other hand, take this ring and twist it, uh, the smallest one, you see an appearance of zero energy states, Majoranas, maybe. Uh, <clears throat> If you now make a much wider ring, they have zigzag edges, so you have the edge states coming in, the, the, the zero energy shell we discussed for, for triangular quantum dots, but you have these topological states that interfere. So for example, here you have this competition between edge states and topology, uh, so uh, you have additional states in, the, in this degenerate shell. And when you turn on interactions, as we do, for two, well, so these states come in and uh, enter the, the, the zero energy shell. And uh, if you calculate the ground state, let's look only at the black dots here, a total spin of the, uh, of the ground state, it oscillates as a function of filling of this shell. And uh, it uh, looks like a, a, a combination of up and down spin domain, domains with domain walls, which are the topological excitations in this case. So, this is just the beginning of this structure. I covered some of our work, uh, some uh, very new, some, some, some older. I talked about possibility of uh, uh, creating a, semi, a field effect transistor with a macroscopic quantum state. I talk a little bit about how you could uh, uh, holes that are Latinger spinners and how you'd make, you could make an electrical strain sensor using these uh, topological quantum dots. I, uh, I talk a little bit about what it really means to uh, manipulate, manipulate mangan with, uh, with excitons in a quantum dot and the fact that, rather surprisingly, you could uh, couple and detect localized spins with spin singlet uh, uh, electrons. It's not really very surprising because there is condo effect. You start with a, with a singlet uh, metal and, and you put magnetic impurity and you see it. Um, and then I, I, I talk about something that we are very excited, that is uh, carbononics or electronics, photonics and magnetism with graphene quantum dots. Um, I want to most of all, acknowledge uh, again my collaborators who contributed to this work. Thank them and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much.
questions, comments? Yes, please. Uh, you, you covered a lot of material, and I'm sort of vaguely remembering the beginnings of your talk. Uh, <laughs> there was uh, the macroscopic quantum state under yes. the gate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm curious about charging and discharging times of something like that. You should ask Andy <laughs> if he is here. <laughs> charging and discharging. Well, well you, you, you created once, and that's it. Put it in the fridge. Why would you want to charge and discharge it? No, but you, th there are other ideas. Once you have an idea, we have some other ideas of making a, a much more temperature robust uh, uh, haldane material in semiconductor quantum dots. Yes, there is a, Annette has a question. Yes, please, I can say yes. Louis please, has a yeah. question. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah, please. Maybe I missed something, but you, in your graph, this is very Yes, it is. In your graphing quantum dots, mm -hmm. when you, you pointed out when the triangular ones had a band gap of a few of 20 milli electron volts, and then your next uh, absorption and emission had band gaps of one to two electron volts. Did I miss something? 20 milli electron volts. You're saying making it into a triangular quantum uh, size, what size of gap do you uh, generate? Size of gap do you generate? Uh, uh, the size depends on the size of the triangle. Uh, yeah. this is 20 milli no, I think I that's wrong. that uh, that uh, it could be, but uh, but I don't know. You, it's the gaps. The the, the gaps uh, from the conduction to valence band are gaps that are similar to to any structure and can be tuned from electron volt to terahertz. So then maybe the gaps within the zero energy shell, because nothing is perfectly degenerate. These gaps are, of course, uh, of the order of milli electron volts. But I will, I will show you maybe later, instead of going through all the transparencies. OK, just please. Yeah, you, you raised your hand, didn't you? No, no, no. no he was only showing I, I, Annette. OK, good. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, Haira. So in the, in the twisted, in the last thing that you showed, the twisted uh, graphene uh -huh. uh, ribbon, uh, so there, I guess, so when you, you mean that it's not spin-off coupling, but in the pseudo spinning degree of freedom, that's where, this, in, in that context, that's where your spin-off coupling would be to generate that topological stability, right? No, no, no. The, the, this has nothing to do with pseudo spin of graphene, no. Okay. Now, but then you, you can you take a, you can take a, a, an S-like tie binding model, right. and so the 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 top, I, I, this is uh, the, okay. the topology is associated with the twist. With so the twist so you don't need to have a, a pseudo spin. But then, can you think of it as, as uh, similar to the uh, topological Hall effect type, where you do the local gauge transformation, and then you end up with some effective Hamiltonian of spin orbit coupling that will translate directly to. I am sure. Models. I am sure that there is a, a universal yeah. class of Hamiltonians so that can be then uh, attached. Yeah. Uh, you can show that uh, at least for for small ribbons, one can derive an effective Hamiltonian mm -hmm. uh, that uh, demonstrate the demonstrates the presence of a gauge artificial gauge field associated with this twist. But we actually have a, a very different uh, derivation which does not involve this gauge field. But there is a there is an, an order parameter, like in polyacetylene. But in, do, in that case, you have states at the different edges of it, or just within just single, just in the dot itself? Sorry, I didn't know. So you know, typically, you associate it within 2D with edge states. Now, in this case, there are just single zero states, zero dimensional Yeah, so states. we have edge states as, uh, that are associated with, with the, yeah, so in a sense, with sublattice symmetry, not pseudo spin, but the, the fact that there is a zigzag edge, so right, right. And there are other states which are associated with topology, so there is this competition which plays havoc with the total spin or brings an opportunity. It's very, we are very early. Did I yes, get please. threads that you wish to change the industry? Yeah, I would like to change the industry. Oh, okay, so in this case, uh, how about room temperature? Do I need uh, in the future to buy liquid helium for my laptop being operated? Uh, we start with what we ca what we have. Yes, we start with what we have. We start with uh, uh, with gated structures. That obviously is a um, a uh, weak confinement. But um, uh, we are developing, or my colleagues at NRC 
have been developing uh, dots on pattern structures, you have uh, dots in nanowires that also can be placed on pattern structures. So there, 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 there will be a, a move to uh, room temperature operating devices. There is another. Pavel, you showed this strange of, um, magnetization dependence on the number of particles, mm -hmm. where you had this very small magnetization for the state after the maximum uh -huh. polarization. Um, how far would be, let's say, the next high spin um, state in energy? Where, how far? How, so how large is the energy? Yes. So there, 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 of course, we have a. We are in a strongly correlated state or realization of the system. Everything is very compressible. The gaps are very small because we have strong correlation. So there the gaps are much smaller and you have to go and estimate what they would be as a function of size. So you could engineer a little bit the electric function screening, but the gaps there are of the order of 20, 30 milli electron volts for these structures, maybe 10. So uh, there will be influence of higher spin states. In fact, if you increase the size, there is a critical size beyond which there is no depolarization. So it's not that it happens for any structures. It's an interaction effect, and it depends on, on the structure. So there is a critical size that one can estimate. So yes, there the gaps are smaller and uh, well, correlated physics is hard. OK, so I would like to propose that we thank both speakers for nice talks and perfect timing. Thank you.